making of the new education policy. What did it really take to put this policy together? For this, we have with us Dr. K. Kasturi Rangan, eminent scientist and chairman of the Committee for Draft National Education Policy. And to conduct this conversation is Mr. Raj Chengappa, Group Editorial Director, Publishing of the India Today Group. And I'd like to thank our session sponsor for this, Amrita Vishwa with the Beta. On behalf of India Today magazine, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. K. Kasturi Rangan, an eminent scientist and educationist. As chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization, Dr. Kasturi distinguished himself. Uh, he not only took the organization to greater heights, but also to the moon and beyond. Uh, now, he is also uh, was still recently the chairperson of the drafting committee of the new education policy and is considered the brains behind the entire reforms process that is there. Dr. Kasturi Rangan, welcome to our show. Thank you, Raj. Nice to see you. Thank you. Uh, my first question, Dr. Kasturi Rangan, is uh, how will this new 5 plus 3 plus 3, uh, have I got the number of threes right, model of school benefit uh, the students that are going there now? Well, Raj, the school model. Uh, over the years, we have developed a good understanding of the field of neural sciences, neural networks, cognitive sciences, and so on, which are closely related to the development of the brain of the child. And so one of the things that we have addressed is the question of the advances in developmental, cognitive, and educational psychology. Now, the change from the 10 plus 2 design to the expanded 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 structure is based on our scientific understanding of the child's learning trajectory from birth to the secondary school. This I want to emphasize because this is the crux of the whole thing that we have tried to address. And there is more science to it rather than data and other kinds of experiences. The second point is that between the ages three and four, three to 14, so to say, that is the 10 years, the child gradually transitions from perceptual learning to conceptual learning to prescriptive learning and finally ability to understand the abstract nature of information and objects. So what do we do? The science tells us that from three to eight, a child's brain is developing rather rapidly. In fact, I should say about 83% of the brains of the child has already developed by the age of eight. So each of the, and also the other part of it is, there is no linear uh, change in the development of the brain of individual, of all the children. Individually, there is development which is unique to a particular child and they are non-linear. Now, if you take these into account that the brain goes pretty fast between three and eight years, it is non-linear, it is not same for all the children, then it is essential that the curriculum for these five years had to be play-based, activity-based and inquiry-based, but otherwise it should be unstructured. That is the most important aspect of it because we cannot deal with the structured education in this period. So the clear goal at the end of the five-year block, which is the first five years, which you said five plus three plus three, is to attain foundational literacy and numeracy, which is a critical base on which we must build the future learning process of the child. Now, I have to say something which is interesting in this connection, that the child also is able to ac accept language learning as a part of this part of it. So really the language learning is also very critical in the same phase. And in fact, either use this brain for language learning or not, the why we call it use it or lose it. That is a kind of a thing. So for we have done more changes to the three language formula, which is already a part of the earlier language policy. One is the fact that the three languages has to be learned as earlier, but two of them should be native to India. And therefore, you create a wider coverage of the language options available to the child. And the second part of it is the introduction of the learning of languages. Now we bring it back earlier to the age of three rather than age of six. So these are the two important other things. And then I would like to say quickly, from nine to 11, the child will transition from a structured learning to rather unstructured learning to a structured learning. We try to learn uh, from the previous five years of experience. And then from the age 12 to, 11, uh, 12 to 14, they will be introduced to abstract concepts. 
and those subjects include science, mathematics, and in bilingual, they, they are taught according to the, our policy. So they become fluent in two languages. This is the other part of it. And finally, the four-year stage, that is the age 15 to age 18, the 15th year education, is when the students explore their interests. And at that time, it is fully equipped both for the brain development and the type of learning process that they just already undergone. And critically, the policy also calls for exposure to vocational education in this phase, particular phase, That's... and is fully prepared. To, the important thing is that it is fully prepared at the at, after 15 years of schooling to decide whether it should break and go into a vocational or a professional education, go to the higher education, but the background that it gets at the end of 15 years of school education is such that it is able to take that view with full preparedness. Now, one of the things you mentioned is vocational education or skill development that's there. That has always been treated like almost like a stepsister to education, looked down upon. How has the new education policy been able to incorporate that? And also given the fact that earlier there used to be a huge emphasis on science and less on arts. And for instance, if you were a musician, you were not getting the kind of importance you got in school unless you excelled in these various other subjects. Have you corrected that imbalance in this new policy that's there? You know, if you really look at the key overall thrust of curriculum and pedagogy coming out of this policy, the reform is at all stages to move the education system towards a real understanding and learning of how to learn. That's the most important. And away from the culture of rote learning. Hmm. The goal will also create a holistic and complete individuals to deal with the 21st century skills. This is our idea. So that is the core of the direction that we have taken. Reducing the curriculum content load, this is one of the key elements coming out of this, is in addition to providing greater room for nuanced learning, understanding, analysis of the mandated curriculum on one side, we did also provide the student, youngsters to explore subjects beyond current curriculum. They must be given time and option for experimenting with different subjects in more, in more hands-on and experiential way not purely by book reading and things like that. And they decide where do they enjoy most, what kind of choices they can make. So these will all be available to them once they go through this particular experience. And this will also go hand in hand with empowerment and choice that the students will have with respect to what kind of subject they would like to carry forward uh, for their future. So this is where the thing is. So what have we done in trying to translate this? We have recommended that we need increased flexibility in the choice of subject. We cannot have a restricted number of choice of subjects. No hard separation of the content in terms of curricular, co-curricular and extracurricular, which is all today separated out. So there is no hard, core, hard separation between those. No hard separation between arts and science. This is the other part of it. And above all also, vocational and academic streams. So this is a major transition from the earlier system to the present system. So pre-vocational orientation is one of the important things in the primary elementary stage. And this will be available to all the child. And then all students will take vocational courses. This is the other part of it. And they are a part of the formal curriculum. And then mm -hmm. they study in areas in depth, in areas like agriculture, electronics, local trade, crafts. And I want to say this because even during the review at the level of the prime minister, he suggested as a part of this, he should allow the youngsters in the school to go and visit the neighborhood industries, neighborhood hospitals, the neighborhood agricultural activities, and things of that kind. So they get hands-on experience with respect to what they want to learn as a vocational area. Now, one of the things that's happened uh, post uh, the drafting of the NEP by you, your committee, uh, was that uh, the pandemic broke out. And this created its own dynamics, uh, its own change in the way we are living. We're already experiencing that. How has uh, this, the pandemic, changed the way we should approach education? What, in your mind, are the two or three big things that we need to now, say, fine-tune ourselves or retune on, on, on what we are doing? Well, if you look at it from the point of your regular education, school education, higher education, and things of that kind, you see it's becoming increasingly this thing, this, the so-called online education, which is becoming one of the critical aspects of how the education is now becoming more and more effective. It is not that online education or distance education is not uh, practiced earlier also, but it was done at a little lower key. 
But now with the physical distance questions, there is now a requirement that you try to take advantage of the distance learning process for online processes in doing this. Now, the questions that are learned that we have to learn out of this is the fact that there is something unique about a face-to-face -face contact between a student and his teacher. And there is, a, there is a question of cultural, the psychological, social, and many other factors that come into picture. And the child learns to respect the teacher and then try to hear seriously. So the questions of how do you try to bring in this element into an educational system, this is a matter which we should need to express. But we have seen the effectiveness of a distance education. We have seen the online education as a very important way to overcome many of the otherwise requirements, uh, constraints that things like physical uh, distances uh, impose on the educational system. But we need to also understand some of these elements which are related to doing away with the face-to-face -face contact and what kind of implications it will have. This is one aspect of it. Distance learning, we have recommended, has to be elevated to the same status as the regular on-class education so that we don't anymore distinguish between the two. There's a very strong recommendation that the distance education can be imparted only by those institutions who are that provide quality education in the regular classes. You talked about multilingual uh, teaching and the uh, need for three languages that's there. Has this controversy been buried finally that there was, all this was a backdoor entry, particularly in South India, to introduce Hindi and make people study Hindi. There's been a backlash of that in Tamil Nadu that we've seen. Has this finally been sorted out in this new policy? That it is a three language formula. Only we started instead of six years, we now started at three years. This is what other. So the two important things in the three language formula is that we start early learning the languages and we also try to have a larger bouquet of languages available as per the policy to learn. The three languages that we are talking is, one will be for the learning mother tongue or any other kind of learning. learning here. You can use to have a second Indian language. That is very important. So two of the three languages have to be Indian languages. And the third one can be a language of choice that parents and school can make, and that can be English. So I, nowhere it says that you have to learn Hindi or you have to unlearn Hindi or this kind of a thing. It says three okay. languages, two of them will be Indian languages, one can be any other foreign language also, which is can be English, and it, the two languages, if you don't want to learn Hindi, that is also not necessary. So it's very clear that the flexibility exists right at the beginning of the policy, this was the stand that we have taken, and it continues to be so. So if interpretations have not been done properly, we should be able to correct. That's all I can. Shan, fine. Let's move to uh, higher education, where you have now um, the you know the recommendation or the policy is for a four-year degree program with multiple entry and exit options. Uh, how will this actually change our approach to higher education? Is it adding one more year? What is it that uh, one is trying to do in higher education? What are the flaws in the earlier system? The, the present system has a mastery on one language, one in one area for one discipline, and they are very restricted as silos. And these silos will ensure that you have a job readiness right from the day one. But is that what we are looking for in a 21st century scenario of a job? This recognizes that this is an approach which is dangerously out of step with the world uh, that is rapidly changing. So what we have recommended is all the existing institutions, for example, engineering schools like IITs, they will move towards a holistic multidisciplinary education with more arts and humanities. They study, you know, STEM team is already there, this kind of a thing, but you could do good in a more, more formal and rigorous way. Arts and humanities students will also learn a little bit of science. There's the other part of it. And all will try to make effort with respect to the occasional subjects and soft skills. They will study some of those kind of a thing also as a professional skill. You, if you ask me whether there has been any 
kind of a example where this kind of a thing is showing the results. The IB schools in the United States is a classic example of where this kind of approach as now you know whether it's MIT or Caltech or uh, Stanford, they have all thrived only because of the kind of strategy they have adopted. And so we have gone very strongly for integrating, creating a multidisciplinary system. Undergraduate education, number one, in the mainstream will be integrated. Vocational education will be brought into the higher educational level because current vocational education is a low level skill. What do you need in the future in the vocational education is the one where you work with highly sophisticated instruments, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and things of that kind. So you try to bring in that kind of a higher level skill, which can be given by only higher educational institution. So vocational education goes into the higher education. Third thing is with respect to the ideas of professional education. Professional education is simply not learning a medicine or a law or things of that kind. You need to have a broad-based approach with respect to the various demands of a professional education. You know, the professional education has two components. One, which is the universal uh, part of it, and the other, which is specific to the professional component. And we, the, pro the, the, the professional part of it keeps continuously changing because the societal approach changes, the environmental issues are there, human rights are there, ethos are there, and things of that kind. And on the other side, the profession itself changes because of technologies. So the undergraduate education has to respond to both of them. So it is no longer a silo-based medical or this thing. You need a much broader system. That is, again, what we have tried to do for the higher education at the undergraduate level. For the moment, thank you so much, Dr. Kasirangan, for taking time to speak to us. जहां प्रेरणा लेती है उड़ान और होता है आपके सपनों की वास्तविकता का निर्माण जहां आपके सपनों को मिलता है आकार वे यू गेट ट्रेड विद इंडस्ट्री स्किल्स सॉफ्ट स्किल्स एंड सोशल स्किल्स संस्कृति यूनिवर्सिटी आप निर्माता हैं अपने भविष्य के वनस्थली विद्यापीठ द लार्जेस्ट फुल्ली रेसिडेंशियल वुमेन्स यूनिवर्सिटी इन द वर्ल्ड nurturing leaders in all the walks of life a legacy of 80 years vanasthali vidyapeet university for women university with a difference